What is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from Marvel, DC, and even IDW as well. This time we are going to continue our coverage over the Ultimate Marvel Universe where we finally pick up post Ultimatum. And we are going to cover Ultimate Armor Wars, the third miniseries that Marvel did to put Ultimate Iron Man on the spotlight. And this one is an interesting story. Was hoping they would do more with this one really, but they did not. But anyways, if you like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, here we go. Ultimate Armor Wars. I do hope you enjoy. So getting into Armor Wars, this picks up a couple of days after Ultimatum, where you see Iron Man walking through the ruins of New York. This is not Iron Man coming here trying to see if maybe there are people out there who need help and stuff. It is more of him trying to get to Stark Tower to retrieve something from there that he wants to have. Because we learned that apparently Stark Enterprise is failing. His accounts are being frozen and stock is being bought up left and right. Stating that this could be the end for Stark Enterprise. And he does arrive at Stark Tower where he goes in and see all the dead bodies of his employees. The building is completely wrecked for the most part except we learn something else. That apparently Stark built a sub level because this man is holding an arc reactor down there. Plus he also has a bunch of different experiments down there as well. Except when he gets down there he is greeted by Justine Hammer, the daughter of Justin Hammer. The man who is usually the competitor to Tony in the main Marvel Universe. But in this universe he was the main competitor to Norman Osborn. Also, he had his hand in creating a lot of different Spider-Man villains in this universe like Dr. Octopus, Sandman, and Electro. But we also learned that he also did an experiment on his own daughter as well, giving her powers and stuff. And so the reason why she is here is because she is looking for some nanotechnology to help her because the experiment her father did on her is actually killing her. And so Tony Stark's nanotechnology can help her survive. And Tony doesn't care if she takes it because he is looking for something else that is more important. Except that is when he gets word that someone else is here in the sub level and they are going after the one thing Tony came here for. This is where we get our introduction to Ultimate Ghost. Now in the main Marvel Universe, Ghost was a guy who made a suit that made him invisible and intangible. But in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, we see that somehow he got his hands on Tony Stark's tech and he made his own armor, except no one should be able to get their hands on his tech. And so of course, you have Tony and the Ghost begin to do battle. Where the ghost is able to get an edge on Tony, at first it seemed like Tony might have a chance in winning this battle, but that only lasted like maybe a couple seconds. Then you have Ghost swinging him around like no other, but then Justine comes in and uses her powers which is being able to produce energy blasts. That does help Tony out from not being killed by Ghost, except remember that her powers are killing her. And that is why she was here to steal Tony Stark's nanotechnology for. Now Tony lets Ghost take the item that Tony was trying to retrieve down here in the first place to help Justine out because she is dying on the floor now. And so you have Tony basically leave the battlefield and run over to his ship and command his staff to hurry up and help her before she dies which is fixing the internal bleeding and giving her the tech she needs to survive. This jumps forward a couple hours later where we see she is okay now. She is cured from the problem her powers were causing her and she moves on to tell Tony that how his system was hacked a few months ago and now this evil organization called the Underground is selling his tech to people. 
And so now he has two missions, which one of them is to go after Ghost, and the other one is to figure out who stole his data to make Iron Man armor and stop them. And she knows where to find the people who stole the data, and so she agrees to help Tony to stop the people from using his tech. Now, the first few pages of the second chapter of this book is really Tony Stark showing Justine around his private jet, and it leads into them doing the dirty. Like, Warren Ellis gave us a couple pages where we see Tony trying to seduce Justine, which of course, she is down, but it was so random to see them stop their mission to go have some fun. Except this leads into Tony Stark and Justine discussing where to go first. And Justine tells Tony that he needs to go after Joan Finoff. Because we learned that Joan Finoff was the one who stole the data that explains how to make Iron Man armors. And so they have to go to Parag. And remember that Justine said it was a group of people called the Underground that was selling Tony Stark's tech to people. And Joan Finoff is part of the Underground. But we also see Tony Stark introduce a new armor of his where he can hide underneath his clothes just in case he gets in trouble. And when they get there, of course, they are introduced to a henchman of Jawan. But this henchman has pieces of Iron Man armor infused into his body. And this is Jawan trying to show Tony that he is taking the Iron Man armor to the next level, basically. But you do have Tony Stark and Justine being confronted by Jawan. In just a matter of seconds of introducing himself to Tony and Justine, he begins the process of trying to hold Tony and Justine as hostages. Except Tony brought in his new special armor, where he is able to take down both a Jawan Fenoff henchman in a matter of seconds, because he is trying to see who Jawan Fenoff sold the Iron Man data to. But this is where the book gets weird. We learn that Jawan Fenoff's body is completely robotic because inside of him is the first version of Ultimate Mordok. This Mordok is Jawan Fenoff because something happened to him when he was around Reed Richards' dimensional teleporter that changed him into this Mordok. And this robotic body of his is what he used to look like, but he tells Tony who he sold the data to. And Joan tells Tony that it was a man named Bram Velsing. I really do hope I pronounce his name correctly. And so you have Tony Stark and Justine get back into the jet and fly off to visit this Bram person. Where of course, when they get nearby, Tony does change into his other Iron Man armor and fires a bunch of missiles to tell Bram that he is here to retrieve his Iron Man data that this man has. Except when Tony gets inside the building, he sees that Bram has made his own Iron Man armor to fight Tony with. And so we're about to get a battle between two Iron Men. And this is showing that there could be other people out there already making complete Iron Man armors. Now this fight does not last that long like I was hoping it would because it would be kind of nice to see Iron Man and Bram Velsing fight for just a little bit more. But we don't. Instead, we see Brown beat down on Tony to the point that Justine had to fly in on her jetpack to help Tony out by once again using her powers to blast Bram away from Tony so he can use his armor to shut down Bram's armor. And this leads into Tony interrogating Bram for information on who else has the Iron Man data. And Brown tells Tony that he sold the data to Great Britain. And so now the whole government has Iron Man's armor and this could be bad. Now while Tony Stark and Justine are on their way over to pay a visit with Great Brenton and chilling on Tony's private jet having a nice drink, that is when one of Tony's assistant runs in to tell Tony that he needs to turn on the TV to see what is happening in Great Britain. That there is a protest happening at the moment. But then the government had just announced they are going to send in a military force to make sure the protest does not turn into a full-on riot. Now only Tony gets to see what's on the TV screen. We do not just yet. 
but we know whatever he saw on TV, it made Tony grab Justine to think of a game plan to help them stop Britain using their new military force. And we see him send her away to do something else that could help him. This is where we learn that Great Britain bought the data from Bram and they used the data to build a complete army of Iron Man armors. And this is what Tony was afraid of a country using his data to build a complete army of iron men and when he gets down there of course he sees the new military force is an army of iron men and so now tony has to stop this this leads to tony fighting against britain's new military force in the middle of the city hoping that with his experience with using the armor that maybe he can take on this army at first he's doing a great job he literally takes out a few of them in the beginning of the battle. He even kills more of them in the sky. The problem is though that he's a one man army trying to take on an army full of iron men. And so after a while of fighting them, he begins to lose the battle. Now for Tony, he still thinks he can win this battle because remember that he sent Justine away to do something else that could help him. And so he's kind of banking on that until he runs into the ghost again, the main bad guy of this story, the one who stole the mysterious object that Tony wanted in the beginning of our story. And this tells Tony that Ghost has a hand into how Britain was able to get the data from Bram and also build their own armor. But Ghost blasts Tony once again and sends him flying into the middle of the river. And this does seem like this is going to be the end for Tony Stark as he slowly drowns in the river. But this is not ultimatum, so they would not kill him off just yet. Instead, we see at the very last second, he is saved by one of Britain's Iron Men and they tell him they have new orders. We learn that Great Britain out of nowhere decided to shut down their new military program because Justine told them that they have bought stolen tech from a man who is an arms dealer. And so it looks bad on them using tech that was stolen and given to by a man who is literally trying to kill the whole world. But Tony also tells us that he was able to spray some kind of tracing fluid on Ghost to find him later. Now we jump back to the private jet of Tony Stark where we see him and Justine chilling again. But this time we come to find out that Tony is in love. Something about mysterious women gets Tony every time like how Black Widow was, and we know how that worked out for him last time. But we see that they are now becoming a couple officially, and he is hoping it stays this way. Except some time has passed by, and we see that Tony and Justine are awoken by an attack on Tony's jet by a bunch of what seems to be a new version of Iron Man. And so Tony goes and gets into his Iron Man armor and tries to take these guys down. Except the problem is that his armor was not fully repaired yet from his battle with Britain's military force of Iron Men. And so he is kind of at a disadvantage here. But also the fact that when he tries to go for the head of these new Iron Men thinking there are actual people inside, he comes to find out the armors are empty. Meaning that someone made Iron Man armor that can function on their own. But Tony Stark is knocked out and captured by them. This leads to Tony waking up tied to a chair and seeing Justine there next to him. But she is also tied down as well. And so this is where we learn who was behind all of this. We learn that Tony Stark has another family member we never heard about. And this begins a trend Marvel does in this universe. Popping out random family members for people. But we get introduced to Howard Stark Sr., the grandfather to Tony Stark. We learn like Mary Storm did to her family, he faked his death because he was working on a project called Project Tomorrow, where his goal was to find a way to make a machine and human hybrid. He did the experiment on himself and of course it worked as we see here. Also the fact that the robot we saw earlier who attacked Tony on the jet, well they actually have brains just not in the head, it's in the middle of their body. We learned that he was the one who hired Ghost to steal stuff from Tony's lab because Howard Stark Sr. armor is kind of outdated. And so he decided to steal from his grandson Tony, but he was also the one who sent the data out to people all over the world as well. 
but he did all of this to get an upgrade. Now to make things worse for Tony, this is where he tells Tony Stark that Justine is actually a traitor, which honestly is not surprising. So now that gives Tony two girlfriends who betrayed him. Howard Stark Sr. sent Ghost and Justine to go into Tony's lab to steal more stuff for his upgrade, but they found the box. The box that Tony was looking for in the beginning of our video. Ghost and Justine and Howard Stark Sr. realize that the box security has the highest level security they ever seen before. Nothing else Tony Stark has this much security. And so to Howard Stark Sr., he believes that this case is holding something special and asking Tony to open the case. Tony tries to tell Howard Stark Sr. it is something that cannot truly help him, except Howard Stark still believes it can. And so Tony says the phrase to open it up, and we see it is ahead of another Tony Stark from another universe. Reed and Tony had to jump into another universe a while back and they had found Earth 242, where the world was on fire. The only thing they had found was the head of that world's Tony Stark. And we learn that this other Tony has special kind of tech on him that is still active, even though only the head is left, where it is able to completely destroy all tech in the room with it. And so Ghost dies because he was a machine-human hybrid, and that goes for Howard Stark as well. They need machinery to live. Justine dies too because the nanotech Tony gave her helped her stay alive because her powers were killing her. All the robots in the room also died as well. And so just like that, Tony stopped his grandfather with the head of another Tony Stark from another universe. And that is how the story ends. A bad ending. So guys, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to my channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, I'm out of here and I'll see you on the next comic book video. Later, guys.